Sir, why did the president write a check to Michael Cohen for $35,000 in August of 2017 while he was here in the White House? What was that money for? Uh, I'm not aware of those specific um, He testified tapes. about this. He specifically accused the president of engaging in a conspiracy to conceal campaign finance violations. He presented the check. The president's been clear that there wasn't a campaign violation beyond that. Uh, I can't get it. He didn't know about these hush money. Beyond that, I can't. His story has changed. Uh, again, I would refer you back to the president's comments. That's not something I'm a part of. And I would refer you to the president's outside counsel beyond his comments. He did during his time in the White House. Does the White House deny that the president is individual one? I'm sorry? Individual one in the Southern District of uh, New York. Again, I'm not going to comment on Cohen. that and on an ongoing case. That's not something I would be a part of here at the White House, and I would refer you to the outside counsel. What I can tell you is the president has stated his position and made it clear. Thanks so, so much, guys. Why did the president deny saying something that was caught on tape on camera? Sarah, why did he later deny it? And we have been listening to the White House press conference this morning. The press conference began with the acting White House Budget Director Russell Vogt defending the administration's new budget proposal. He called it a fiscally responsible, common-sense spending plan. He was asked, uh, you know, what happened to the president's promise to eliminate the national debt? And instead of eliminating it, he has added to it significantly. He mentioned a paradigm that the administration wants to break that he says has been particularly hard to wean Congress off of. He said Congress wants to match military spending with spending for social programs dollar for dollar. He talked about the work requirements that are being added to housing and food stamp programs. Uh, and after his uh, after his portion of the press conference, we did hear from Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Again, there has not been a press conference, White House press conference, in over 40 days. So there were lots of questions, including from our very own CBS News Washington correspondent Paula Reed, who joins us now. Hi, Paula. Hi, Tanya. So we saw you there asking Sarah Huckabee Sanders about the check that Michael Cohen presented to Congress, uh, which he claims shows the president paid him back for those hush money payments. What was her response to your question? Well, at first she suggested she was not aware of what I was talking about, but specifically, this is corroborating evidence that Michael Cohen presented during his congressional testimony. Look, there's no doubt that Michael Cohen has trouble with the truth. Uh, he is admitting to admitted to perjuring himself before Congress, but here he presented evidence to back up his claim that the president continued to pay him back for hush money that he had paid to former adult film star Stormy Daniels. Now, in an ongoing investigation in New York, federal prosecutors believe that they, these hush money payments were made in violation of campaign finance laws. So, Tanya, the reason those checks are so significant is because they suggest that the president engaged in a conspiracy to conceal campaign finance violations through the time he was here in the White House. One of these checks is dated August 2017. So my question to her is, what was the money for? And she could not give me an answer. That was not a question that she was looking forward to talking with you about, Paula, clearly. Another question from another reporter that she didn't have much of an answer about was uh, whether or not the president was willing to say if he planned to pardon Paul Manafort or not. What did she respond that, there? That's right, because historically the president has been asked about this a few times, and one time he said it's something he has not taken off the table. Now, the concern about that is some people raise questions about possible obstruction of justice by dangling the possibility of pardons in front of people who are supposed to be cooperating witnesses in the special counsel investigation. But here she declined to comment. She would not say why he won't take it off the table. And we know that Manafort will face a second sentencing later this week. He faces up to a decade in prison on top of the approximately four years he was sentenced to last week. Now, I want to also go back to a question that she was asked several times and she would not provide a yes or no answer to, and that was whether the president truly believes that Democrats hate Jews. Why was that question so difficult to answer? It's unclear why she could not give a yes or no answer to that. She somehow tried to punt back the president's comments to Democrats, demanding that they explain themselves and their positions. And it sort of broadened out into this larger conversation about the president's reactions to events, including Charlottesville and other members of the Republican Party making comments that suggested they in some ways supported white supremacy. Overall, it just seemed like an opportunity for her to tamp down the rhetoric. So, you know, of course, the president doesn't believe that, but he has some questions about our policies, his, their policies. But she did not do that. She was asked three, maybe four times about this, given opportunities to clarify. She would not say whether or not that is the president's stance. 
And there was also not much information about where things stand with uh, trade talks with China, Paula. There was a question about whether a date had been set to meet with President Xi. There is no date so far that has been set. Is that correct? That is correct. And there she was willing to say that all options remain on the table. They asked, well, will they have a phone call or will it still be an in-person meeting at the end of the month in Mar-a-Lago? And she could not give us a definitive answer. People asked her, they said, look, there are reports out there uh, that people believe the president is not a reliable negotiator and that in some ways China is now reluctant to have this meeting or summit at the end of the month. But again, she just said all options are on the table. We really didn't get any insight into where those negotiations stand. All right, Paula Reed at the White House. Thank you so much.